Good evening, everyone. Water Pollution Control Authority special meeting, Monday, December 19th. The time is 6.51. Roll call, please. Vice Chairman Sakala. Bathroom. Um, we'll come back to her. Chairman Crisati. Here. Commissioner Despard. Here. Commissioner Finger. Here. Commissioner Hopkins. Here. Commissioner Ludwig. Here. Commissioner Mangini. Here. Commissioner Nelson. Here. Commissioner Pisner. Here. Commissioner Santanella. Here. Commissioner Ungeyer. Here. Vice Chairman Sakala. Here. It's 11 members present and none absent. Item number two, we have a request for a waiver of $7,950 sewer fee connection for the proposed farm brewery at 50 Weymouth Road. Okay. Uh, town Manager Zapu Sasu, please. Yes, good evening. Uh, we are here to consider a fee waiver for the sewer fee connection for a proposed farm brewery. And as I've communicated to the uh, town council, there's a couple of issues here that we need to work through. One is the actual sewer fee connection. And then the second one is the interplay of new state legislation, uh, Connecticut General Statute 7-255 that offers some direction about how municipalities and water pollution control authorities can bill for usage. So they are two separate issues, but I do feel that they are somewhat connected to this uh, cost factor discussion. Um, I'm going to ask our public works director to come forward because he is the technical subject matter expert here. That would be best to answer your questions. Um, this is, uh, I do have a worksheet for this. Um, as we discussed, the, for a commercial permit, it is a $200 permit. An inspection fee would be $100. And then there is a facility connection charge, which is based on a calculation that exists within our regulations and ordinance, which works out to $7,650. So the total uh, request for waiver right now is $7,950. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Donald Noon so he can kind of give you a little bit of an <coughs> overview, including um, some comparatives that we have and also um, any type of history that we might have on sewer connection waivers. Okay, thank, thank you, Donald. All right, Donald Noons, Director of Public Works. Um, so the $7,950 that town managers talked about is based on a calculation for equivalent dwelling units um, as part of the ordinance. Now that equivalent dwelling unit states that every 200 gallons, uh, if you were to take a property that has not been sewered um, and turn it and go into the system, it's $3,000 for every 200 gallons. Uh, Mr. Tim Kuhn from J.R. Russo Associates provided a calculation to Mr. Masterberti that they'd be using approximately 510 gallons per day. So that 510 gallons per day divided by 200 uh, it gives 2.55. 2.55 times $3,000 is $7,650. That's how that calculation was derived. And again, the permit fee as a commercial fee is 200 and the inspection fee is 100. So the total fee uh, to connect this property, which never had sewer before, connected into our sewer system would be $7,950. Um, in section 86-181 uh, of the ordinances, it says that the WPCA um, shall establish a one-time sewer connection charge for recovering a portion of the cost of the sanitary sewers uh, that were installed, and persons seeking sewer service shall be liable for such charge. Um, I don't have any ability to waive any fees or do anything like that. I am following the ordinances that I have been sworn to do. Um, the cost of any installation, it would be borne upon the owner. That's an 86-11 as well. And what's important to remember is that this is talking about a sewer connection. It's, it's the privilege and or right to connect into our sewers. It's not the physical pipe that runs to it. So that sewer connection is the actual, is just the ability to dump your sewage into our sewer system. That's where the sewer connection comes from. 
the piping and the like. Uh, it's a very unique situation out there where there is a force main that travels well over, uh, I think it's 1,300 feet west, and it goes uphill and dumps into the sewer, uh, sewer manhole right opposite of Pheasant Hill. That goes in, so that gets pumped into there, and he'd be using that same connection. Um, there are some stipulations, and J.R. Russo did a, a good job of, of amending or trying to come up with a design that'll work, and so it doesn't tax our uh, pump station at Pheasant Hill, which is at capacity right now. Uh, so we will, this, the if this is allowed to go through and the and the connection goes through, it'll be pumping at like two o'clock in the morning, a slow drizzle, kind of like 10, 15 gallons a minute. So it's not taxing our and overloading our system at Pheasant Hill. Um, just for comparison's sake, the um, 113 North Maple uh, recently paid $46,380 for their connection fee. 12 Meacham off of Taylor uh, paid $3,000. 14 Watch Hill paid $3,000. And 25 Troy is going to be, uh, will be charged the $3,000. That'll be going out tomorrow as well. Um, I am unaware of any other waivers. I've been here for four years, and this is my first one. So, uh, questions, Councilor Mangini. Thank you for the overview. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, I think you've answered one of my questions. So, I don't ever recall such a request either, and I've been here probably longer than you have. So, my question again um, is based on why are we being presented with this type of request from this particular um, establishment and then my second question is um, will the town be at a disadvantage in any respect by granting this waiver your first question I would defer to the town manager on that why we're here why we're here well we're here because a taxpayer has requested the waiver um, this is a very interesting project because mr. master birdie I believe he installed let's use the right terms his own sewer line for the for, right, for, for the other property so he incurred the cost at some point in the past and installed a sewer line that services 54 that connects up so now the request is for a separate property that has never been serviced by sewer to connect into this existing sewer line i think I, am i right so far donald so you know one could say that mr master birdie paid for this line we're just going to connect into it which you know is a true statement the issue becomes though this is now going to be an additional use of processing that is coming into an already overexerted Pheasant Hill. So that's why he hired an engineer to create a plan that addresses that. So that's all set. We know what we have to do in order to accommodate the usage that's going to flow there. And I believe it's going to be a holding, a holding tank and be pumped in at downtime. So literally the the waste product from this proposed farm brewery commercial entity will go into Pheasant Hill like did I don't know if it's two o'clock in the morning or something like that so that it'll be at a time when there's not other usage so all of that has been worked out the issue before you is do you actually do the waiver based on what's been presented to you or do you hold with the policy of not having waivers and see if there's an economic incentive somewhere else to offer him farm breweries are actually a, a, a pet project and initiative of the state of Connecticut. And in researching some of this, I think I sent one of you an article, I think I sent some, several of you an article that talks about this being a very aggressive approach to convert usage and have farms be involved in the brewery process. There's a bunch of regulations that they have to adhere to, but it's one of these cutting edge uh, ideas that are coming forward in order to use, but yet preserve at the same time farmland. What is interesting to me and one that Attorney Tallberg and I are now wrestling with is the fact that there's all of these other incentives and other um, layers of things that are being offered. And in reviewing an intergovernmental report a couple of weeks ago, there's this piece in there for Section 7-255 where it talks about how one could assess uh, sewer charges to a farm brewery, which means that there is a potential benefit 
for Mr. Masterbrody on this new legislation, which he may or may not even know about, but we don't know how that fits into this picture. We don't know if that'll be a benefit, if a waiver would be a benefit moving forward. Um, would he be eligible for other abatements and or economic benefits in order to get this moving because it would be a benefit to the town? Uh, we have not had time to flesh through what that means in terms of this. I'm not sure what his timeline is, but I think it might make sense if we have our attorney review what section 7-255 and that subsection about how to calculate sewer usage fees for a farm brewery specifically means to all of us. Because again, these are two pieces that are going to be part of Mr. Masterbrody's eventual business plan. Um, my other part of the question through our mayor, um, again, Mr. Nunez, I'm going to redirect to our town manager. So essentially, it probably would be a wise move for council to wait until we have more information. I'm not comfortable with what we have in front of us right now, but I do like the explanation that you've just provided, and I have to agree with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Nelson. So in the regulations, it says to the... To the extent a developer is required by Water Pollution Control Authority to install a trunk or other sore pipe um, to or through such developer's property of sizing exceeding the size needed to service such property, the excess cost resulting from such requirement as determined by Water Pollution Control Authority may be deducted from the current charge. Now, this was passed February 13th, 1969, before we had a sewer charge. So Mr. Masterbirdie and the farm will be paying a sewer fee, regardless of what the state says. So if the state's willing to give him a break, the town of Enfield feels it's okay to take it from him, and well, since he's going to get a break there, we're going to charge him here. He ran the sewer main. He spent almost $8,000 on engineering a town of Enfield problem because it's not a residence proper, a problem that our water pollution control pump station is way undersized right now. And as we discussed at our last meeting, it's being infiltrated by groundwater because you and Todd both said it runs for days and days and days on heavy rains. That's not right. So there's something wrong with that pump station that we as a council should be fixing, and we're going to hold them accountable for it. And he agreed to pay the $8,000, and he finally got um, suitable engineering to the town of Enfield that everybody agrees on. He won't pump during the day. Find another property in Enfield that has those restrictions on him. That's why he should be rewarded for his effort. The state of Connecticut wants farm breweries. Who are we to say, well, because he's not going to have to do this or that, we're not doing this? It's, it's not right. I just don't get. It's his sore line. He put it in. The town of Enfield didn't run it past his house 30 years ago, and he's tying into it. When he built his home, he ran it all the way down the road. He has a pump at his house. He's agreed to put another pump at this farm brewery. He's agreed to put it on a clock. All at his cost, his engineering, I just don't understand. Why do we have our hand out when he's going to pay a sore fee like everybody else unless the state of Connecticut made a special provision, which has nothing to do with this council, that says he doesn't have to? That's where I stand on this. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, before I was going to say, I was just going to say if Attorney Talbert would like to weigh in on uh, any of this and then. Well, before he okay. does, if we could just uh, perfunctorily have a motion and a second on the floor so that we can continue the discussion. Um, so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor of that, raise your hand, please. No. No. Just as a point of order, are we yeah. going to continue yeah. this discussion in that before we move on that? That is correct. Yeah, there's no, we don't need a vote. We just need the motion and the second. Correct. Okay, C Councilor Hopp, oh, uh, first of all, uh, <clears throat> Councilor. Sure. All I would say is, uh, first, on the, the issue before you, whether to waive or not, that's in, within the discretion of the council. So that's your prerogative, uh, acting as commissioners of the WPCA. Um, what I think has been suggested is that you, you just hold on that until we figure out the answer to Councilor Commissioner Nelson's question. 
uh, in looking at this House Bill 5331, an act concerning the Liquor Control Act, the language I've seen in it states that um, sewer charges are not applicable to permittees who held a manufacturer permit for a brew pub uh, for a beer issued under such and such regulations, but it says prior to July 1, 2020. So our question in order to give an opinion was, can we see what kind of permits have issued, if at all, for this facility? And maybe this legislation is not applicable. Maybe there will be sewer uh, charges assessed to the property owner. At this point, I just don't have an answer. Um, new legislation, and so we need to take a closer look at that, as uh, the town manager said, uh, related but somewhat separate issue. So you have that motion on your uh, on the table about the hookup fee. There's this separate issue about whether they would have to pay sewer use charge that we're still trying to figure out. Which is a separate issue. Which is, uh, correct. Councillor Hopkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think this is a, a pretty neat little business idea. I think it's something we should encourage in, in town. Um, that's something I think the council has been actively trying to, to, to figure out how to encourage businesses like this. Um, but I mean, my calculus is a little bit different um, than Commissioner Nelson's. You know, would we replace um, would we replace the Pheasant Hill facility? You know, just because of this? No. Um, though there are real concerns with our sewer system, it takes money uh, and a lot of work and elbow grease, frankly, to maintain the system. Um, I have one concern about the, the, the Pheasant Hill situation and how this tank is going to operate, um, but I overall support waiving this because um, this applicant has put in uh, a lot of his own money and it's something we should encourage. Uh, plus, we're getting uh, an increase in the grand list on his property for the improvements he's making. We're, we're getting that. Um, ultimately, I haven't done the, 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 the hard math, but I'm comfortable going forward on this because I think we should support uh, small business. But you know, would we replace the entire Pheasant Hill pump station to do that? No, that, that's a real, you know, the taxpayers do care about that. And I think most people would probably say we like small business, but we understand it costs money and it costs taxes <coughs> to do this stuff. I think this is a fair compromise, but I would like to hear more about the, the tank and how that's going to operate. Is it automated? Are there things that the brewery is going to need to do? Um, and do we expect that they'll follow through? Because I would hate to have a meltdown over there because that's, again, going to cost time and money. Yeah, understood. So just a little history about how things work out on that section of Weymouth Road. So as you travel, so if you come off of Route 5 and you're heading east on Weymouth Road, you pass uh, Weymouth Drive, which is going to be on your right. All those houses on the north and the south side of Weymouth Road, going easterly, going down the hill into Pheasant Hill, the houses on Pheasant Hill, all of those houses flow into the Pheasant Hill pump station was designed for that amount of houses. We do not have a sewer east of Pheasant Hill. There was no intention of extending the line. We don't have a sewer line out there. There's nothing that goes out there almost until Pioneer and out that end. So there is, there is a get, there's a huge gap of sewer that there was no intention of having that on um, for that. So the house at 54, again, pumps almost 13, I think it's 12 or 1300 feet. Um, and it goes up the hill and into that manhole. So again, that was that the area in front of 50, 54, and the next few properties just don't have, they just don't have the sewer in front of their homes. So the tank is designed again to hold about a thousand gallons and the flushing, washing, and all that kind of stuff like that, that goes into that holding tank. And at whatever time we, you know, I think it's I said at 2, 2 a.m., I said it's just a slow, um, it's a slow drizzle out there and it take and it, it dumps it into that pump station. The pump station now is at uh, we're pumping about 67 uh, gallons a minute through there. It's it can handle it handles it now. We have a two pump system, um, but with the amount of flow that was calculated from here, that's why we switched. That's why we asked for that some sort of uh, a different way of getting that stuff to that station not during the middle, not during morning rush or that kind of things like that. So it will work according to Ms. According to J.R. Russo Associates and it should work just fine with, with that. But again, it's utilizing, you'll be utilizing that same two inch line that is in, goes in front of that property. He's gonna put a T on it. There's isolation valves, there's other things so it doesn't blow out his, the, his home in case it does malfunction. Uh, you don't get any back pressure and goes into his other, to his house one, so. 
Uh, do, do, are you comfortable with that engineer's report that he Yes, oh. Todd, and, Todd and I looked at it, uh, the pumps, we looked at all the engineering information that came with it. The pumps are adequate, the things are, everything is adequate for the system. It's just a function of this, um, again, it's just a connection because it's not a, a property that had a sewer or was intended to have sewer. Now it's, you want to connect into it, so that's where the connection fee comes in. I have no authority or control. I am following what the ordinance tells me to follow. I, I have no other choice, Commissioner Nelson. I, I don't. I, so I just want to make that clear. I am following the rules as given to me. So thank you. Okay. Yep. Th thank you very much. Uh, Councilor Santanella. Yeah. Um, through the mayor to Donald, could you just go down the list of the other businesses that have recently connected and how much um, yep. they have paid again for me? So 113 North Maple was 46380 12 Meacham was 3,000, 14 Watch Hill was 3,000, and 25 Troy is 3,000. So, you know, I, I have a very different perspective here, uh, quite frankly. I, this is a cost of doing business. And, you know, whether it's uh, a special need for sewers uh, or needing three cycle electrical or whatever it is to to start a business on a property that was not designed for that purpose is is a is a normal cost and is part of what you factor in when you start up a business. Um, frankly, I, I think you know I support small business, but I think if you're we can't go down this slope of changing the rules for. Uh, every small business that has a special need. I think we have never had a waiver before. I think it's a great idea. I think it's, unless there's some statutory reason why we can't be collecting uh, these funds, I think it, it's, it is a normal standard cost of business for this particular individual. And I, I'm not gonna support um, this, this fee waiver. I just think it, it is an unfair waiver. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Pisner. The other businesses that tied in, did they put the original sewer line in themselves? They like put their laterals, they put a lateral in. Not the main. Right, this isn't a main, this is their lateral. No, but he owns the main. He put the main in, in the street. It's debatable whether that's a main or a lateral. This is what I'm finding, that's... and this is where I'm having a problem understanding it, because if Mr. Master Birdie put in the main, He's connecting basically into his own sewer that he paid for. So right. I, I get a cost of business. I understand that completely. But the other businesses didn't pay to have their main put in as he did. So I have to support it in the sense that he's, he's hooking into his own sewer, the way I'm understanding this. Right. No. If someone else across the street wanted to tie in, they would not be able to tie into that lateral because it's not enough. It's not sized properly. It has nothing. It's just for that home. It's it's not a, a, a main is for use by many community, uh, many residents or businesses down usually again down the middle of the road or somewhere in the right of way. We that's just that wouldn't be the case here. So there are no people across the street would not be able to use that as a main. That's why. I am viewing it as a lateral because it only serves that house and it gets, and it, and it gets pumped and it's a two inch line. So the main does not belong to Mr. Masterbury from what you understand. We don't have a main in, on Weymouth Road east of Pheasant Hill. Mr. Masterbury has a two inch lateral that serves his property that's in our right of way. That he installed. That he installed as his lateral. Councilor Finger. Thank you, Mayor. So a little history is across the street from that pump station it used to be a different pump station, right? right? They took it down because it was just, it was horrible and they built it when they put in Pheasant Hill. Right, I was working at WPC when that yeah. happened. So the whole thing was when they built that Pheasant Hill pump station, that was supposed to be more than enough to handle those there's not even a lot of houses up there. No. There's not. So if this pump station is being over overused with a lot of with a lot of water going through and that pumps are running bad, the suggestion is, you know, there's a lot of groundwater. So what we should do is we just bought a brand new camera system for WPCA 
and we should use that camera system to investigate, which I did for many years down there, investigate any type of in-ground influence coming in that's making these pumps over overwork, overrun. Now, I don't know why we're not doing that. If there's an issue there, we should be doing that. Okay, that's been a history of the WPCA for many of years. So we should have that, and I'm going to support this because if this man, if, if we start telling people that you, that that, we, that you want to put a small business here in Infield, but you know we're not going to help you as we have helped other small businesses recently, uh, like on Pearl Street. Um, you know, we need to make sure that, that we're going to stick to everything. If we're going to be consistent about the decisions that we make up here, we need to be consistent with everybody, not just certain few. Now, the whole thing is, is that if that, if that is only going to run at 2 o'clock in the morning and it's going to drip, it's not going to harm it. It's not going to harm anybody. It's not going to have any effect. There's not going to be any type of illegal chemicals coming in to turn the plant bugs into the aerators. Uh, bad. I mean, you know, this is just a no-brainer. I mean, this, this gentleman has, has done everything that is possibly, possibly to help out what he can. And my last statement is, without farms, we have no food. We have nothing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Finger. Um, I'm just going to make a final comment, and then we can uh, move, move forward, you know, with this. Uh, one thing that I just want to mention, I, I think the, the overall project, uh, it's a very interesting project. I think somebody converting his farm into a uh, brewery, separate section brewery, um, and knowing that there's going to be an assess on sewer charges, it's not that he's not going to be getting charged per sewers. Um, you know, I, once again, um, you know, I, I like the idea. I do like the concept, um, and I, I do understand the uh, – difficulties that we are having with that pumping station, but he's done everything uh, above board and he has made a commitment to do everything that he has to do on, on his end. Um, so I, I do not have a, an overall problem uh, with this and in, in supporting this, knowing that he still is going to be paying a sewer usage fee moving forward. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, just hold on one second. I, I am finished. Uh, yeah. Councillor Ludwig and then Deputy Mayor so, Scott. So, curious, I, this one, so the lateral, when he went to put in the lateral, what did he have to do? So, did he have to come? Just curious. So, I, when the property was built, he goes to put, what's the process he had to go through to? He had to get approval, I assume. This was, yeah, it was 14 years ago, I believe, yeah. that that happened. I wasn't in my current capacity. Well, what would, so, if someone now is, so the property across the street, there's a sign saying it's for sale. Assume they don't have a main. I mm -hmm. can't assume. I know so that's the west side, I believe. What would that? So whoever purchased, so if I go develop that property, and I need a and I do a lateral. What would? What's the process? I guess for that. You'd and so to, we'd have to file a permit. Then we would re then obviously we would review. We would review it for how we would get get that sewage to that. If it's if it was a re if it's reasonable, and if the developer or person wanted to go with the expense for that. And so the developer would be of that property would be in, would have to pay the lateral or yes it's in, according to again back to the ordinances it says that it's it's all it's borne upon the resident to connect to do to pay for all the connection fees okay but so, so not the fees I'm talking about the lateral itself cost it's of actually, install I, I, um, cost of installation this is eight eighty six dash one 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 d cost of installation. Town indemnified all costs and expense incident to the installation and connection of the building sewer from the building to the sewer main shall be borne by the owner. The owner shall indemnify the town for any loss or damage that may directly or indirectly be occasioned by the installation of the building sewer. Again, I'm just I'm no. I, exactly. Well, again, I'm trying to understand you know, again, like to make sure I'm clear. You know, if the individual is willing to work with us for the you know the two a.m. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, I, and we have waived fees for other situations, you know, in the last year we have certainly, and we have in the past, so it's not like it's completely unusual. Yep, right. But, but, but so, sorry, so, so this one you mentioned 46 grand without, what, what, what did that individual or property owner have to do to, what, what, why was this so expensive? Because uh, it's based on the frontage. Okay. Based on frontage. So if the other property across on Weymouth is developed, 
At what point does the town have to put them in? Is there any regulations we have to put them in? There's nothing I could find that we have to provide that, or we we would have to expand our sewer system if we don't. If again, we can't. So the farm that next to it, that they're not connected to a main either. No. Yes. Which one? I don't. Yeah, I mean, you think he's talking about across the street? No, that one, the one, the bigger one. That. Yeah. They're connected to our main, that larger farm. Through the two inch. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Scala. Um, so I guess I, I had a couple of questions that I had emailed, um, and I'm not really sure that I'm clear on some of the answers. So um, I do have a couple of, I guess, remaining questions, because I didn't think that it was clear if he was going to pay a sewer use fee or not. Right? So it's not definite that he will, and it's not definite that he won't. So we don't know. Depending on a lot of factors of his business plan and his permitting through the Liquor Commission, he may or may not be eligible for incentives offered by uh, the Department of Agriculture via the Liquor Commission, where he would, where, where they are saying that the town will exempt sewer fees and we would not be able to calculate them based on water usage, which is what we do. So that is unclear right now because we are still gathering information. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I think everybody up here is, wants to promote small business. So, you know, whether you're for or against this particular thing, I don't think that's a, a measure of for or against small business. So if, so are there other incentives? Is that what you're saying? That there might be other incentives available to him outside of the sewer use or the outside of this waiver? Our job as staff is to bring you as much clarity to a larger picture as possible. The incentives potentially being offered through the state of Connecticut and the Liquor Commission would affect what Mr. Masterbirdy pays on a sewer usage. And I think I can defer to Donald to tell you what that might look like, for example, just so it'll give you an idea. We are completely in favor of small business as well, but the larger picture is if he doesn't pay a connection fee, mm -hmm. which is within your purview to say yes or no to, there may not be any opportunity at any point for the town to collect any money on processing waste that is being generated at this new business into our system ever. So. That's our purpose here. You can waive this. You cannot waive it. We just feel that it's important that you know that there are these larger issues in terms of how this is being played out. A lot of information to gather. We can come back to you once we have more information about the sewer usage piece, if he's even qualified for that. We don't know that. But at this point, you are setting a precedent in offering a waiver to a small business that, just so you know, Future developers are going to say, oh, they do waivers in Enfield, and they may come and ask for one as well. If this is going to be folded into your overall economic development formula, that is fine. But just know that that is one of the roads that you're going down as well. And it's always good to have a variety of economic development tools in your toolkit. This could be one of them in order to induce development. Right. So I guess that's how I'm kind of looking at it, right? So you want to offer some sort of incentive for either a large or small, medium-sized business, a new business, an old business, whatever. So how I'm looking at it is, yes, I want to offer some sort of incentive, but if the work has already been done, and at this point he's just looking for a waiver, and we don't have answers to all of the questions it sounds like a few of us have, um, I would be comfortable waiting. The work's not done. The work's not done. Is there a time frame? on when we would get the answers to the questions on if he would pay a sewer use fee? Uh, we ought to have the answer about the legislation uh, by the next meeting, for sure. Okay. And in all fairness, this really wasn't discussed prior to, I mean, this wasn't really on the leadership agenda, so this is sort of all last minute. And I know it's been something that some counselors up here have been working on, and, I, and I'm understanding of that. Um, I would be more comfortable waiting for some additional answers than voting tonight. I don't know if it will change anybody's vote, but I just want to make sure we can sort of give a small business some sort of incentive, but not penalize the town as well. So that's that's, that's my two cents. Can I give the example of what a rate could be 
versus what it would be if there was an eligibility with the state? Yeah, so um, based upon the sewer service fee schedule, which is posted on the WPC website, uh, it would be the, for a yearly charge um, based upon um, private well and the base quarterly charge would be about $1,940.40 would be the, if, again, for, for a year plus the base quarterly charge of $156. So if, uh, if this property or if Mr. Masterberti was allowed to not pay all week, all that I could charge would be the base quarterly charge since it's not since it's not a water based calculation. So again, that would be one hundred fifty six dollars, thirty nine dollars a quarter because it states that the base quarterly charge for the wells would be on the smallest meter size, which is thirty nine dollars per quarter. So for a total of a total okay. of one hundred fifty six dollars. So regardless, he will get charged the one fifty six per quarter. Yes. OK. Annual. Uh, no, I thought yeah, you said or, quarter. I mean, it's a quarterly charge. So that's the annual cost, $156. Oh. Now, whether the 1940, that, that's for Attorney Talberg to, to um, discover, you know, for him to re research that. OK. OK. So my, my request was that we wait. That being said, I don't know that we have a resolution. And I don't know if that is the consensus of the commission regardless. I'd like to make a motion to table it until we can get the answers to these questions. I'll second that. Uh, there was a motion to table. There's been a first and a second. All in favor of that, raise okay, your I'm hand. I'm sorry, can we have discussion on that? I just, I'm, I know, I'm a pain. I just, okay. I, I do want to table it, so thank you. I would be in support of it, but I also do want to make sure we deal with this at the next meeting. So let's get this, let's get the answers done so we can make a decision so everybody knows. All right, so let's uh, all in favor of tabling, please, uh, all in favor and against. Okay, so it looks like six, six in favor to table, five against, so we will table to next. Mm -hmm. huh? Opposite. Six, excuse me. Six, want to vote. Six. Seven, two, seven, four, five. Oh, it's so, okay. I, I read it. Okay, seven four against, not the table. Okay, my 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 bad. Okay, all right. Okay, so we will we will vote on this. You need a motion. We yeah, we already had the motion. Okay, Sheila, roll call. Vice Chairperson Sakala against. Chairman Crisati. I'm for. Uh, count, uh, Commissioner Despard? Four. Commissioner Finger? Four. Commissioner Hopkins? Four. Commissioner Ludwig? Four. Commissioner Mangini? Against. Commissioner Nelson? Four. Commissioner Pisner? Four. Commissioner Santanella? Against. Commissioner Ungeyer? Four. That is eight in favor, three against, and no abstentions. Good luck. Make a motion to Do adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Councilor Finger WPC. and second, uh, Councilor Ungeyer. Uh, all in favor? Uh, unanimous. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Enfield Town Council regular meeting, Monday, December 19th, 2022. The time is 7.36, and welcome. This can also be viewed on YouTube. Um, after we have our reflection, I am going to ask our kid governor, kid mayor, Tristan Corshain, to come up uh, and help us and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And then you'll be doing your presentation in a few minutes after that. How does that sound? That sound like a good deal? Okay. Well, do me a favor. Could you open that door for me? Yeah. Do we have somebody there? Oh, look at this special guest, Santa. The special guest. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Welcome. Jeez. Jeez. Jeez, Santa. <laughs> if, I can get, if I can get two Welcome, here. Welcome, Santa. I know what I'm getting. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> welcome. Oh, thank you. What? Very first what? Welcome, Santa. <laughs> Merry Christmas, thank you. Oh, you've been naughty. Uh, we, we've all been naughty, I think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all try to get along. That's what it's about. You need Where's this guy? You, you need to leave two in that seat. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. really bad. He's on the council. Yeah, he's he's bad. Bad. Mm. <laughs> well. Oh, well, we, we, we knew that there was some reason. I thought I heard a little jingling earlier, so so I had so we so we had to wait. So. Um, Santa, welcome. Don't get hurt. Watch your step. Is your insurance paid up? <laughs> <laughs> you got to share this uh, story. <laughs> so, well, well, welcome, Santa. <laughs> well, welcome to the en Enfield Town Council. Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, Santa. Well, well, Tristan, did you ever think that, you know, you'd open the door for Santa? No, well, well, welcome. Well, we will now <laughs> start with our reflection and prayer. <laughs> Counselor Despard. Okay. Spirit of wisdom and peace. We invite you to preside over this meeting today. Give us clarity so that we can effectively tackle each part of today's agenda. Reveal any problem areas and show us the best solutions that will apply. Even if, or should I say when we have differing opinions, please show us the spirit of unity. Help us to listen politely as others share their differing points of view. Help us to work as a whole rather than as individuals trying to promote their own agenda. Point our eyes to all the positive progress we have made and let these favorable results and development encourage every heart in this room and in the community as a whole. Amen. Amen. Tristan, would you like to come forward, please? Not with you. Just come on up. You're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Could you stand right here, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sheila, roll call, please. Councillor Despard? Here. Councillor Finger? Here. Councillor Hopkins? Here. Councillor Ledwick? Here. Councillor Mangini? Here. Councillor Nelson stepped out of the room. Councillor Pisner? Here. Councillor Santanella? Here. Councillor Ungeyer? Here. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Here. And Mayor Crisati? Here. That's uh, 10 members present and one absent. Okay, thank you. Fire evacuation announcement. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the chambers and to my left in the audience's right. Exit through the doors and go downstairs into the parking lot. Minutes of preceding meetings. 
Is there a motion to approve the special meeting December 5th, 2022? Councillor uh, Mangini. Second. And a second, Councillor Pisner. Are there any corrections or changes? Sensing none, by a show of hands, all in favor? And opposed and abstentions. Okay, we have uh, eight in favor and two abstentions and one absent at this point. Do I have a motion to approve the special, uh, excuse me, the regular meeting on December 5th, 2022? So moved. Uh, Councilor Mangini and a second. second, Councilor Finger. Are there any corrections or changes? Sensing none, all in favor? And there's none against, and abstentions? There are two, once again, the eight in favor uh, and two abstentions and one no vote. And do I have a motion to approve the special meeting so moved. minutes, uh, December 12th, 2022, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Second. And second by Councillor Mangini. Are there any corrections or changes? Sensing none, all in favor? Um, against and abstentions. So we have uh, one abstention and we have nine in favor and one no vote. Okay. All right, next, uh, we will have special guest uh, with us tonight is Tristan Corshane, um, our kid mayor, uh, kid governor. Um, I would like to say, first of all, congratulations. You're a fifth grade student at Prudence Crandall. And I know you had a tough go of things, uh, you know, to compete against everybody. Uh, you did have a wonderful platform that you did get elected by. And uh, we, we have a short little video that I would like to show everybody. Um, so, Alex, um, can you start that video, please? Hi, my name is Tristan, and I want to be your Connecticut <coughs> kid governor. I want to stop racism. Racism is a massive problem all over the world and near and dear to my heart if I am biracial. Did you know that black kids get suspended and expelled more than the average white kid? I know it's crazy, right? People are not being accepted for who they are just because they're Asian, Indian, Hawaiian, black, or African American. You are not superior over them and they are not inferior over to you. Everyone should be treated the same, all humans. We are all equal. A survey shows that 89% of people have either experienced or witnessed racism. Racism most commonly happens at school or online. How many of you have been a part of racism? I have a plan to help make a change on the topic of racism. I've created three amazing ideas for my platform, so listen closely. First, I will create a song with important lyrics that lets others know all races matter. I will work with my music teacher, Miss Clark, to create the song so I can share it with my school, community, and the world. I hope the song will bring awareness to fairness on racism. We even created some lyrics. Check it out. We are because he always thinks of the good and not the bad, and he is a problem solver. Tristan is caring because he cares for everybody. Tristan is inclusive because he includes everyone everywhere he goes. He makes sure all voices are heard. If he is chosen for the next Connecticut governor, he'll include all. Tristan is trustworthy because he will never break a promise, and you can trust him to get the job done and done well. Vote, Vote Tristan, Tristan for your next Connecticut, Connecticut kid governor. governor. If you choose me for your next Connecticut kid governor, 
I will help end racism by creating a song, a blog, and an anti-racism curriculum. If you want results and change about racism, then vote for me, Tristan, for your next Connecticut Kid Governor. All right. <laughs> Tristan, come, come on forward, please. Before you start tonight, that was a pretty heavy-duty uh, video you did. That was awesome. A little nervous making that? Definitely. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, I have to say, uh, you know, you, you are representing Enfield well. Keep up the great work. On behalf of the whole town council and myself and our administrative staff, inside here we have a little something for you. And congratulations once again on your selection. And I know that I'll be seeing a lot of you throughout the, the year. And uh, have fun with this, okay? Thank you. And uh, so you got the mic for a couple of minutes here. But that's for you, okay? You. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tristan, the kid mayor of Enfield. My platform is about racism, and I chose racism as my platform because I don't want people to get bullied for their skin color. And I believe that everyone should be treated the same, no matter what their color. I am proud to represent Enfield as the kid mayor and continue to try to end racism. Very good. Nice. Th thank you, Tristan. Uh, anybody have any comments? Councillor Pizda. I just want to say you're one of the snappiest dressers. I mean, you were at the Torchlight Parade. You had a beautiful jacket. And look at what you have on tonight. I wish you the best holiday, the best holiday break. And I think you're going to do a great job representing us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Mangini. <clears throat> Tristan, you make us very proud and thank you for all your dedication and hard work. Thank so you. So we're going to be depending on you to make some good changes in our world. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hopkins, then Councillor Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Mr. Kid Mayor. Uh, I really want to compliment your speaking skills. I think they are uh, pretty advanced for your age. And I want to say you'll go far, kid. Keep it up. Councillor Nelson. Uh, you go to school with my grandson, Jaden, and I think he'd make a deputy kid mayor for you. So <laughs> give him a call. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, Councillor Santanella. Tristan, thank you very much. You are an inspiration to many of us. And um, I, I think as adults, we have a lot to learn from young people like you. So you keep up the good work and you keep all of the adults in your life honest and on message to what you're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Well, th thank you. Thank you very much. And um, thank you for your patience prior to tonight's meeting. And you had a special visitor. This is a great day for you. So have a great holiday, you and your family. And there's mom in the background over there. And uh, very, very, very proud of you. So keep up your good work and thank you very much. Happy. Okay, before we get going, um, I'd like to uh, have Pam come to the mic, please. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna let her go. No, no, no. <laughs> nice job, Tristan. Hard act to follow, too. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. So hi, everyone. Tonight I'm here to say thank you to every volunteer, business, organization, and to those that prefer to stay behind the scene but make a huge contribution to the success of Enfield's Wreaths Across America program. This year, I got to be a part of every pillar of our mission, remember, honor, and teach. 
thanks to the efforts of Lori Gates, we began the TEACH mission with the convoy, when the convoy came to Enfield. It returns each year because of you, Enfield. The excitement of having it return for the seventh time, and then for me to learn I was riding along. Let's just say I didn't sleep much the night before. I thank Lori, Superintendent, Superintendent Dresick, all the students, faculty, and teachers that waved along the route, Enfield's first responders, and those from other communities that saluted our precious cargo. Enfield citizens stood along the side of the road as well, and some of them saluted. A special thank you to the Enfield police for getting us through town safely. I encourage you all to watch the convoy's YouTube video on the Enfield Public School website. It is truly heartwarming to see all the children out there along the sides of the road. Although this is a national event, at the local level, it all begins with St. Raymond of Penafor uh, Parish, that's St. Patrick's Church, that allows us to have a public gathering on their sacred grounds. For that, we are grateful. Our local businesses sponsor wreaths, donate items, and some of them fundraise like Jersey Mike's. Some send volunteers like Home Depot. Our local veteran organizations, what can I say? Many of them are in their 80s and they would not miss this ceremony. They are there for their battle buddies that did not come home. If you look at their faces, you can tell they are remembering. Our town employees never hesitate to help and ask, is there anything else I can do? If they can't do it, they help me find a way. Our first responders participate at our ceremony to read the names of Enfields killed in action. Our Station 1 Fire Department accepts and stores our wreaths. Then, in the early hours of the morning, they deliver them to the cemetery. To watch them stage our wreaths throughout the cemetery is beautiful to see as the morning light begins. It's exciting as our volunteers arrive and ask, what do I do? The wreaths are removed from their boxes. The boxes are removed from the cemetery by one of our own local businesses. The, seminar, cemetery, sem, the ceremony area becomes busy with anticipation. Our scouts and veteran organizations prepare to participate. People that have never attended or volunteer stop me just to say hi and thank you. Some share their story or two about their loved one. I'm always glad to listen. It reinforces my why. To every photographer and picture taker, thank you for sharing your pictures. And to everyone that sponsored a wreath, I say thank you. This is truly a community event. As our 2022 mission comes to an end, we look forward to our 2023 mission. We need your help to honor more of Enfield's veterans. Here are three things that you can do that will make a difference. One, our greatest challenge is finding a veteran's grave, believe it or not. Yes, most have a flat foot marker that identifies them as a veteran. Most get a U.S. flag placed on it. But often, the foot marker sinks and gets covered by leaves and grass. I ask you, please maintain your loved one's grave, especially if it is a veteran. We want to remember and honor every veteran. Read sponsorship. Although sponsorship takes place all year long, right now until January 15th, there is a wreath match promotion. For every wreath sponsored, the cemetery gets a free wreath. You must sponsor through a group and no later than January 15th in order to get the free wreath. You can sponsor by going online to www.wreathsacrossamerica.org backslash CTSPCE then select a fundraising group, or you can email me at enfieldwaa at yahoo.com, and I will send you the information by going through a fundraising group. The group does get back $5 for every purchased wreath. It's a winning combination. Volunteer. There are many jobs that need to get done before, during, and after. If you are interested in coordinating for a specific cemetery, please contact me at the same email I just gave. I will help you succeed. 
in review, keep, keeping the graves clean, sponsoring REITs, and volunteering is the key. Finally, I would be very remiss if I didn't say thank you to my husband, Lucian Lefebvre. He is right by my side when it comes to veterans and REITs across America. I feel very fortunate because of REITs across America. I am able to see the good in people. We are a community with big hearts, not only for our veterans, but for other causes too. Keep up the awesome work, Enfield. I am proud to say I live in Enfield, Connecticut. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Any questions? Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Councilor Mangini. <clears throat> Pam, I just wanted to say thank you to you and all of the people that you had helping. It you know, truly was a wonderful ceremony, and I can see the growth every year and did a phenomenal job. Thank We're very you. fortunate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item uh, seven, public com communications. Any person wishing to speak in front of the council, please state your name and address for the records. You'll have five minutes the first round, then three minutes the second. Please refrain from any personalities or personnel issues. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me, haven't talked in a while. <clears throat> I'm Chris Lang, 90 South Road. I'm here also as a core member of Showing Up for Racial Justice, Surge. Uh, in a few minutes, you'll be addressing the DEI committee agenda item. I have a request that when you get to that item, that you speak specifically to three things. If you will give the listening and watching public a little description of how you solicited, how you vetted, and how you chose your candidates. Uh, number two, uh, I think it, since there are no core group members of Surge that were part of the selection, uh, we would like to discuss at some point a Surge liaison with the DEI committee. And number three, I have a question looking at the agenda. Why do party affiliations appear next to the DEI appointees' names? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody, <clears throat> is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Thanks. That's better. <laughs> I thought I was loud enough. Okay. So yeah, again, it's an effort that Suffield has done to study areas of their town where they can make improvements. Some of these are low-hanging fruit improvements, signage, you know, improving crosswalks, things like that, up to full-blown ro road redesigns. Uh, that committee is made up of members of the public, members of town staff. I believe the police department's on there, and as well as their uh, board of selectmen has a representation on that committee. Um, part of the results of that effort, they actually uh, hired a group to do a study, came up with a bunch of recommendations that included public uh, input into those to prioritize various improvements that they're going to make in their town uh, that they can then go get funding for. So again, my ask is, could the town of Enfield look at something similar, again, with the idea of making similar type of improvements in this town? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anybody that wants to come in front of the council? Anybody that wants to come in front of the council a second time? Okay, I de declare public communications over. Thank you. 
Uh, next, uh, Councillor Communications, Councillor Mangini. Thank you. I just want to comment, uh, Reads Across America, once again, um, it was really a, a well-put-together ceremony, very honorable, and it was good to see so many people attend and participate. Thank you again to the organizers. Uh, Rachel's challenge was yesterday, and that was another uh, well-put-together event, and it really drives home the message, especially to our children, on um, you know respect and caring and community service and wonderful um, gift prizes they had. Um, but I was happy to attend with my two grandchildren and I know they enjoyed it and Santa showed up which made it even more special. And last, I just wanna wish everyone happy holidays, be safe and let's remember to show respect and care for each other. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Nelson. Um, yes, through the mayor to the town manager. Uh, just was wondering if we were to get able to get public works out to look at the culverts behind the mall where they run through that access road because I actually looked myself and they're three quarters of the way blocked up and it seems like there's a lot of water that's building up there. And you know, I was on the council in 2005 when all those homes flooded. And if we don't get in there, whether it's our problem, their problem, the state's problem, I think that's gonna happen again. And maybe while they're looking at that, finding out who's responsible, we can check High Street and Route 5, and we can also check uh, 91, because those were the three points that caused all those neighborhoods to back up and flood. Like right now, all that storage behind the mall is maxed out, and we haven't gotten a lot of rain. So if we do, People are in trouble, so I'm just trying to be proactive. Um, other than that, uh, along with Councilman Mangini, everybody have a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. I'm sorry I missed Santa. Okay, thank, thank you. <laughs> Councilor Pisner. Um, again, thank you, Pam, for all you do. Lori, you're amazing, uh, the dedication you put into it. Um, and I do encourage everybody to go on the website and buy your wreath, especially buy one, get one. Um, it's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful ceremony and a wonderful way to remember. Um, I wanna give a shout out to two women here in Enfield who make a huge impact on our residents. Um, and it is our two moms on a mission. They are two women who ask for nothing but give so much. I've been a huge supporter of them since day one, going to their little quarter auctions. Um, they do fundraising throughout the year, quarter auctions, bingos. Sometimes it's for a particular group. Um, I've actually been lucky enough to, to win one of, not, I don't wanna say win, um, it's a nomination auction and you put your charity up um, and my charity has won a few times. Um, these two women, make Christmas possible for kids in this town. And they do it by quarter auctions, by pocketbook bingos, but mostly by the people and the community coming forth. Uh, whether you can afford a book or you can adopt an entire family, whatever, they take it. And it's amazing. Um, I've worked with them now since they began. And I just can't say enough of good things, and they never come here so that we can give them recognition. So I want to shout out to Carrie and Lauren. Thank you. Enfield is so lucky to have two moms on a mission. They really are. And please, go to one of their auctions. They're so much fun. They're actually going to have a kid auction at the end of January. So you can bring, I'm going to bring my granddaughter, um, and, and they're just a blast. Um, and, and they, these two women just, they hold a special, special place in my heart. So I wanna give them a shout out. Um, and just like everyone else, just have a wonderful holiday. Take some time, just enjoy your family. Um, just make it a special time with your family because Christmas to me is my holiday and I know everybody celebrates a different one, but whatever it is, take the time to just reach out, be with your family and friends. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.
<laughs> I'm not going to rent that to you for a lot. <laughs> Fair enough. Te technical difficulties there. there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through the mayor to the town manager, I, I would really um, ask if we could jumpstart um, those conversations that we were having about a water pollution control commission. I think this uh, Weymouth Road uh, uh, last request is a good example of something that could go through that committee. Um, I know there are some folks I've talked to in town who are interested in adding their expertise to, to such a committee. Um, you know, there are a lot of questions, and that's a big system that I think could be answered before it got to the council so that, you know, this stuff moves um, more smoothly. Um, also, I should say I'm really proud and excited to see um, discussion on appointing DEI committee members. Um, this, this is, I think, a very important committee for the town uh, to crib a few lines from our kid mayor's original song. You know, we are what we are, are all equal. We are all human. I think it's really important that we um, we show our work here in town and and get this going. I want to wish everybody a really uh, Merry Christmas, uh, festive Kwanzaa and a happy Hanukkah and otherwise safe and warm holidays. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopkins. Uh, we might have to have a, a mic fee, uh, you know, maybe a, a new ordinance that we could talk about. But uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, you stole a little of the thunder in terms of the Water Pollution Control Commission. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Deputy Mayor Scala. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, congratulations to Enfield Public Schools, um, who were again in the top five um, for the Enfield or the EPS PJ Day um, this year. They raised uh, $10,802 this year. So if you're curious, over the last five years, it's over $36,000 that they've raised just here. Um, in Enfield. So again, top five in the state. So I think that's pretty great. So great job EPS and Enfield and all those kids who were their PJs. Um, through the mayor to the town manager, two questions, please. Um, looking for an update on the ice rink possibility at Powder Hollow. I know we've done that in years past. I know it's been relatively mild, but um, it's cold today, and I think it's only going to get colder, so if we can get an update on if the ice rink is going to be possible, and I guess while you're at it, any of the, um, where we stand in any of the field updates at Powder Hollow and the time frame for that, because high school sports start in April. Other than that, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and um, we'll see you next year after this meeting. Great, thank you. Appreciate that. Councilor Finger. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, bah humbug. Only kidding, of course, only kidding. Happy New Year, Enfield. Merry Christmas. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other uh, comments? Uh, I, I do have a couple of comments. First of all, yeah, two two quick um, items. Uh, just tonight, Alyssa Rosignal did score her 1,000th point for the Enfield High girls soccer, or excuse me, girls basketball team. Congratulations to Alyssa. And also uh, former Enfield High School uh, field hockey player, Taylor Gigalone, uh, first team All-American, University of New Haven. So congratulations to two wonderful athletes. Uh, I, I, I said that I would make notice of it in tonight's meeting, and congratulations to both of you. Um, you should be proud of your accomplishments. Um, yesterday was the last day of the indoor crafters market, and it ended re really, I guess there was over 120 vendors. And I want to take a moment to thank Connie Preventure, uh, who's worked as the town's market manager for the last few years. She recently notified the town and us that she's going to be stepping down from her position at the end of the indoor season. So tonight is the perfect time to give her a shout out and thank her for all of her work at the various vendors and logistics of both the summer and indoor market days. So I just will give her a little round of applause. And I would just like to ask somebody from the dais to make a motion so that we can get a letter sent to her uh, a thank you from all of us. Can I have a motion, motion for somebody? Absolutely. I'll second it. Okay, second. so uh, a, a second by our <laughs> Councillor Nelson uh, and a second by Councillor Ungeyer. Um All in favor? 
it's unanimous. So uh, I would ask the town manager at this time to send a letter on behalf of the town council for her efforts over the past years uh, in helping with the indoor and outdoor markets. Okay, thank you. Uh, one other thing, um, I just want to mention that uh, I know Councillor Finger and uh, myself and I attended the CROG meeting last week. And this was uh, the survey re results from CROG that, that dealt with the Enfield Square traffic imp impact study. If anybody is interested in this report, please go online uh, to CROG. Uh, organization uh, and field traffic impact study to give you the the, the lowdown. I, I am very impressed and so wasn't the state of Connecticut that we had over we had 1187 survey responses. This this uh, question came out in February of uh, last of 2022 and it was only four weeks to get close to 1,200 responses in, in four weeks was outstanding. So they dealt with uh, the, the different areas on residential, retail, entertainment, office, warehousing distribution, and just general shopping mall trends. This was a, a great overview that they did give to us. I know that we did have a public comment tonight in regard to pedestrian and bike safety, and that, and I totally agree. And once again, uh, to the town manager, if that's something that that we can actually do to have a committee, because they said that Enfield is not user friendly to bikes and walkers. And the other thing that where are we going with this study is where where they asked everybody that was in attendance. They gave four different options plus the original options to the Enfield Square on access options. So once all this information is tabulated, they will be coming back to us to give us an update as to, you know, if we can get uh, the owners of the mall to start thinking, uh, being proactive, let's do something with this. Maybe we can get another uh, owner to this or, uh, you know, move along with the development of the Enfield Square. The time has come now where we need some action. The state of Connecticut um, is helping us through CROG. So I just wanted to give everybody a quick little update in regard to that. So uh, once again, um, you know, I could go on with a few other things, but I'm not just to save some time. Finally, I would like to wish everybody, all the residents, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. And I want wish everybody to stay happy and healthy during these very difficult times that we have. And I urge all residents to stay up with your boosters and your vaccinations. So with that said, uh, I think we, if not unless there's any other comments, I think we're ready to move on with tonight's agenda. So, so thank you. All right, next. Uh, Town manager report. Good evening. Uh, this was one of the council meetings where you received the projects and activities report, which is 15 pages of uh, great updates from all of our departments. Um, a reminder that our meetings in January have been shifted to the second and fourth Tuesday, uh, Mondays because of the holidays and uh, small business grant is under consideration right now by the Economic Development Commission. There were over 50 applications. Uh, there are applications that exceed the amount of money that you, the town council, has allocated to that. So they're going through a process of evaluation. I expect that the Economic Development Commission will be making recommendations to you probably in January. Likewise, the nonprofit ARPA grant application process is open until Friday. We've received several applications, but for anyone who is interested, it is for nonprofits and not for profits. So anyone who is recognized by the IRS as a 501C could be three, could be eight, could be 13. 
could be a seven. There's a bunch of different clarifications. We have received that question over the course of the past couple of weeks. So please let them know if you are working with any nonprofits, churches, et cetera, that they are eligible. We, uh, the assistant town manager and I are putting together somewhat of a state of the town, uh, kind of a forecasting look so all of you can see what some of the projects are moving forward for 2023. And at your preference, we can do that on January 9th or we can do that on January 23rd. I think it would be a really good goal setting for going into the budget process. And it's also part of our activities in which we're trying to coordinate a better economic development response for business retention business recruitment, and really just keeping tabs of everything that's happening. So uh, I can talk to leadership and you can tell us what works for you in terms of us unveiling kind of that uh, map of what we'd like to do. In terms of the pedestrian bike safety, I think that it probably would find a very good home right now within the public safety committee because it's a topic that is relevant and we can put that on the agenda and actually talk to our friends in Suffield and see exactly what's happening there and, and replicate that. Uh, in terms of political affiliations on the agenda, that is a state law where there has to be a balance. And so we include them so that everybody knows that there is uh, that state law is being adhered to. In terms of um, Councillor Nelson's concerns, those obstructions were reported to the Public Works. I'm going to follow up with them tomorrow about Route 5 and High Street, and we will determine ownership and report back to the Council. And for WPCA, we do have that in committee at the Public Works, and the Public Works Committee has had a lot of various issues facing it. We probably need to put that back on the agenda and decide which way the committee wants to recommend to the council, whether you continue to sit as a subgroup or whether it breaks out as a commission. And if that's the case, we'll have to work on an ordinance in order to uh, put that into effect. In terms of the Powder Hollow skating rink, I think I had reported at a previous meeting that there had been vandalism to the liner from last year. The Public Works Department has replaced that and procured an additional liner. They've started to put the boards up. We are ready to go as soon as the weather cooperates, which it currently is not. Um, in terms of the larger Powder Hollow project, we were not getting very good response from the contractor who we had uh, an initial contract with. So the Public Works Department has decided to go in a different direction and we've retained a different company in order to do those in a timely and quality fashion. So we are hoping that spring is still on target for everything that needs to be done there so that that field is available. I think that about wraps it up. Uh, Steve is going to just update you briefly on some current personnel matters. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. And I actually want to share an experience with you that made me feel good, and we, we can all get credit for it. Last uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we had uh, promotions for detective, sergeant, and lieutenant right here in this room. Uh, the panel would sit at that dais, and the hot seat was right there. So to avoid any appearance of biasness or favoritism, we outsource these um, oral panel interviews from the police department. And HR conducts the interviews, and I get um, panelists from towns such as Manchester, Glastonbury, East Hartford, West Hartford, Windsor, Bloomfield, and detectives, lieutenants, captains, they all sit there on the dais and they grade our oral panelists, uh, our, the interviewers. And as I'm shuttling them back and forth and um, through the hallways here, and they're looking at the decorated doors, and they're seeing the people, and I'm greeting them and introducing them, two unsolicited com compliments came from them. They, they said, wow, everyone seems so happy here. And I was like, hmm, that was interesting. Uh, I, I don't think like that, but they said, well, in my town, everyone's mopey. They're walking around. They're all sad. And these are towns that pay higher money than what we pay, unfortunately. But... I'm like, I was reflecting in interviews, like, well, what is it that we're doing different? So these are some of the things that we're all doing collectively. We, we do the, uh, the employee picnic for employees. We do the years of service for employees. Uh, we just passed four contracts this year. We did ARPA funding. Even Deck the Doors, that promotes esprit de corps. That makes people feel good. It doesn't cost anything for the town, but yet we all participate in things like this. Halloween, we dress up, we walk around, we, we act like kids sometimes, but you know what? Happy employees are productive employees, and we can't forget that. Uh, what else do we do? Even things like cards and, and candy. I feel great. It didn't cost much, but it's little things like that. Uh, attending that swearing-in ceremony. All these little things that 
costs next to nothing that we do for our employees, and it makes them feel so much better that I know one other town has now borrowed some of the stuff that we're doing because they didn't do that. And it's really just acknowledging employees. Um, and in the words of our kid mayor, uh, Tristan, be kind. I saw that in his message, and it just resonated with me. It costs nothing to be kind to people. So that's why I want to leave the holiday spirit. Merry Christmas and Happy New to you, to you and all the folks at home. Thank you. Okay, th thank you, Steve. Greatly appreciate that. Are there any uh, reports from special committees? Uh, Councilor Mangini. Thank you. The um, Joint Security Committee did meet last Thursday in executive session to review in-house security assessment of the schools. The review was done by our staff from uh, Public Works, Enfield uh, PD, and Board of Ed, Chief of Security. All schools were reviewed except JFK and Enfield High because of the security upgrades that are already in place. Uh, due to security concerns, there will not be a public document shared. However, there are some pieces of the presentation that we want to have council uh, share in. Uh, for example, you know, the building and ground staff and uh, Rackliff locksmiths fixed all of the items requiring immediate attention. So tonight, through our mayor, I would like to ask the town manager to share the presentation with our town council. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other reports? Yep, Councilor Ungar. Hi, good evening. Um, I wanted to say that I attended the Enfield Beautification Committee this week, and one of the topics uh, we had was about the Adopt-A-Spot, and there are several areas in town that are still available. If a business or a resident would like to adopt that area, you'd be responsible for maintaining it or flowers or shrubs or weed whacking. Um, you can put a little sign advertising your business or, or whatever you want. Um, the fee is $100, and that's lifetime. So you pay it once, and then it's yours. So there's several available, and if you're interested in doing that, please call Ken Boulay. His number is 860-763-7524. And I'd also like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. Okay, thank you very much. Councilor Pisner. Um, I want to give a shout out to the Commission on Aging. Um, I have the pleasure of sitting on that committee as a liaison, and I have to say it is the youngest group of retired folk that I've ever been with, um, and the work they do is amazing. Um, we have some reappointments, um, which I will gladly say yes to. Shout out to Alice Egan. She does all the shopping for St. Joe's and Parkway to make sure that no one is forgotten at Christmas. Um, so a huge shout out to her for going out there and doing that. Um, and again, they are just the most amazing group of retired folk. Um, I'm proud to be part of it, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other reports? Okay. Okay, item 11, there's no unfinished business. Item 12, there's nothing under the consent agenda. We will be moving to B, appointments, town council appointed. Number one, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. The town council hereby appoints John Malinowski, Yared Toledo de Michelle, Brandon Jewell, Monica Ogums, Rosalind Swift, Chad Woodard, and James Hoyne for terms to be determined upon final resolution. Do I have a, a motion so to appoint uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala and a second by Councillor Mangini? Um, there's just one, one comment that I do want to make um, in terms of um, a final resolution. I know we have a draft resolution, and I know that the Council will be uh, making some modifications and some changes in terms of uh, liaisons, uh, length of terms, and there's a few other things that, that, that we will in budget. And, and, and budget, and these are things that, that we will discuss uh, before the, the first meeting. But I just do want to mention that. I am very happy with the, the, the group that was selected. And so um, if there's no other... Um, uh, comments. Go ahead. Uh, Councillor Pisner. Um, I just want to make it clear that there will be a liaison from each caucus um, that will be put on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. I think it's important that we each have a liaison on there. Um, and if we can name the liaisons, that would be great. I think that's what she wants. Since we're putting the committee together, we put the 
I think we should have a liaison so tonight. Part of any first meeting, the council's involved. Well, excuse me, Councillor Despard. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I was, um, I, I think, uh, through the mayor. I think um, this is something we were going to want try to get together and talk about more, right, in the final draft. So I mean, I think that's a great idea, and I think we we need to talk about that more before we go through the final resolution. We're just appointing these folks tonight, is my understanding. But they but make the final resolution. <laughs> no, no, we, no. We will be we making will. that. Oh. Yes, we will. Okay. Yes, we will be making that. Yes, in, and and that was <laughs> yeah. It was stated uh, in okay. the interview. So there will yes. be wording in there that will yes, there say will. there will be a liaison from each caucus. Well, yes. Everybody agrees with that. Yeah, I think yes. we agree with that, and I, I we, think we'll have we time are. to get together. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. I did want to say a couple things about that. this, Bob, if that's okay. Uh, Mayor? Yes. Just, um, Councilor Desper. Yes, yeah, so and uh, I'm really glad to see movement on this. I'm also glad that we've, we've taken our time with this. It's really important, and I'm glad that there still is work to be done. Um, on the final resolution, and I would like to see some similar things that we're talking about. So I think we can come together as a council and do that. Um, uh, you know, because I would like to find, I and mean, we had such wonderful applicants. Everybody who applied was was qualified, and you know, to my mind, anyways, I would just like to find a place for everybody. If we have that kind of interest, you know, why wouldn't we, uh, uh, you know, use that? In in my opinion, um, but. You know, regardless of that, it's just it's wonderful to see so so many people want to be involved and to see so much support for this in the in the community. It's one of the ways I know we're headed in the right direction, um, and I too would like to you know make sure we everybody feels comfortable with this final resolution and that we have more discussion about that before that becomes final. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Scala. Thank you. Um, very briefly, just thank you to everybody who applied. Um, I actually think every single person that we interviewed had something unique and wonderful to bring to the table, and I would love, actually, everybody that we interviewed to be on this committee. So I really appreciate it. Um, I think they were all qualified, and I'm excited to see this committee get off its feet and start working, um, and for the town council to sort of get our heads together and figure out the final resolution so we can march forward. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to be doing a, a hand vote. All in favor? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And against? And abstentions. And two abstentions. Okay, so we have not nine in favor and two abstentions. Congratulations to everybody for being on this committee, and we will be in touch with you. Um, in regard to when the first meeting will be. Next, the Beautification Committee, the term of office of Darren Ketchell expires on 12-1-2022. Reappointment would be until 12-1-25. This is just the reappointment. So do I have a motion so to moved. reappoint uh, Councillor Nelson? And a second was Councillor Ungar. All in favor? It's unanimous. Next, on the Commission on Aging, the term of office of William St. George expires on 1-1-2023. Reappointment would be until 1-1-2026. Once again, this is a reappointment. Do I have a motion so to moved. reappoint? That's Councillor Nelson and a second by Councillor Ungar. All in favor? Unanimous. Next, uh, Commission on Aging, the office of Howard Florian expires on 1-12-2023. Uh, excuse me, 1 12, yeah, 2023. Appointment would be until 1 1 2026. Is there a motion so to moved. reappoint Howard Florian? Uh, well, as well keep going, this is unanimous. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Councillor Nelson, Councillor Ungar, all in favor? Unanimous. Beautiful. Next, Commission on Aging, the term of office of Alice Egan expires on 1 1 2023. Reappointment would be until 1 1 2026. Uh, is there a motion to so reappoint? Councillor Nelson, Councillor Rungar, all in favor? Unanimous. Good. All right. Thank you for those appointments. Next, discussion resolution. C, request for a bid waiver for professional development contract with the Connection Institute for Innovative Practice. B, 
Be it resolved that the town council does hereby find, based on the foregoing compelling public interest and in accordance with the town charter, Chapter 5, Section 8D, that this is therefore against the best interest of the town to solicit bids for the purchase of department-wide professional development support and services. They prepared December 15, 2022, prepared by Cindy Guerrero, Director of Social Services. So moved. Councilor Mangini. Second. And a second by Deputy Mayor Sakala. Um, is there any discussion? I know we have um, Cindy uh, here in the audience. If there's any discussion on this, um, I see none. Roll call, please. If I could just, Mr. Mayor, oh, just very I, briefly. I didn't see your hand up there, Councilor. Uh, it wasn't. A, my apologies. I just want to briefly say I think this um, uh, is important. Um, I, it sounds like maybe there's not a big interest in hearing more, so I will, <laughs> I will defer. But his microphone is working now, <laughs> and I'm I'm very grateful for our okay, town staff for literally sprinting in here to replace it. So thank you. All right, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Nelson. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Eleven members, four and none against. Item D. Uh, this is a request for a bid waiver and a transfer ARPA funds for ClearGov software. Uh, this is a re recommendation from the town manager's office that has been reviewed by uh, general governance and the finance committee. Be it resolved that, that the town council does hereby find based on the foregoing compelling interest and in accordance with the town charter chapter 5 section 8D that is therefore against the best interest of the town to solicit bids for the purchase of software and implementation services. They prepared June, uh, December 15th, 2022. They prepared by, uh, excuse me, prepared by John Wilcox, Director of Finance. So moved. Councilor Mangini second. and a second by Deputy Mayor Sakala. Any discussion? Councilor Santanella. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, the General Government and Finance Committee met with the uh, town manager uh, late last week to review the proposal. Uh, we all saw the presentation at the previous council meeting, and uh, we recommend strongly moving forward with this. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Councilor Ludwig. To the Mayor, Town Manager, just curious. I know the statement of work is you may have a more detailed contract. Just curious. Do we have a clause to make sure that if there's any use of our information, that there's a hold harmless or, or at least a, a you know an agreement with the town if if case they're going to use any of our you know for protection if there's any financial information they use, usually in in a statement of work there's something where they you know they need to, some uh, some statement says the town has to make sure sign off first if there's any usage of our data. That's all. It's just I think it's a standard clause. I don't know if it's going to be a more detailed contract. I'm I'm for this. I was just curious if there's a more detailed contract. We can definitely ask for that to okay. be specified. They will only be uploading data that we supply to them. Okay. So I'm sure Mr. Wilcox will be watching that in terms right. of the transparency piece. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sheila, roll call. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Nelson. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. It's 11 members for and none against. Item E, discussion resolution to close out the underground storage tank project line and transfer the $85,016 to bolster the troubled properties committee line item. Uh, this is a recommendation from the town managers and a director of finance. So. Uh, so moved, uh, Councillor Nelson, and a second by Councillor <coughs> Bangini. The resolution is the following. Be it resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made from the Fuel Tank remo Removal Construction Services, $85,016.11, 
Two troubled properties, miscellaneous expenditures, $85,016.11, date prepared December 14, 2022, prepared by town ma manager Ellen Zapusasu and the director, finance director John Wilcox. So moved. Uh, Councilor Mangini and a second, second by Deputy Mayor Sakala. Any discussion? Um, Councilor Ludwig. Real quick question to the mayor, town manager. Was this underground tank, was this town wide or was it on town property or is it both? Didn't we have a tank at the DPW that we had to remove per last budget? Is this different from that? Yes. Okay. These were the tanks that we orchestrated removal of at various schools throughout town. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Okay, Sheila, roll call. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Nelson. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Eleven members, four, none against. Item F, discussion resolution, the resolution setting a public hearing on the proposed ordinance establishing the number of justices of peace at 75. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby schedule a public hearing to be held on January 9th, 2023 at 6.45 p.m. in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, in order to allow public comment on the proposed ordinance establishing the number of justices of the peace at 75 respectfully submitted sheila m bailey town clerk attachments we have here our like town by town comparison chart and we have a proposed ordinance in the the, the packet here so moved. Uh, councillor excuse me deputy mayor Second. sakala and it's seconded by councillor nelson um, okay, uh, Sheila, uh, would you like to come? Excuse me. Uh, yeah, Sh Sheila Bailey, would you like to comment on this, please? Thank you. Sure. Um, currently, um, our number of justices of the peace are set by state statute. We're one of 33 towns out of the 169 that have not passed an ordinance limiting the number of justices of the peace. So um, it goes by the a third of the jurors that we have, and that's a convoluted formula of population and uh, the number of people in the judicial district. Um, so we have 5,405 eligible JPs, which is difficult to administer for my office. Um, that 5,405 is divided by three because by state statute, the Republicans get a third of those, the Democrats get a third of those, and the town clerk gets a third of those for unaffiliated and minor parties. Um, currently, we have 85 um, justices of the peace in the two parties. The way that they are elected is different if they're a member of the political party versus being unaffiliated or a minor party. Um, I receive endorsements in May from the town committees on, and it's a list of people they wish to endorse for justice of the peace after the November, and that is uh, during a presidential election. So the current term goes until January 6th of 2025. So we receive the um, number of endorsements from the town committees, and then after the November election, we start going through and making sure they're eligible. The last time we received, which was in January, I mean, May of 2020, um, we received 142 endorsements from the two town committees. Um, after we verified that they were still registered voters, some had moved out of town, some had changed parties, so they couldn't be endorsed by that party. Um, we ended up swearing in 76, so 66 were no-shows. And when we got the uh, 142, um, we have to do their certificates, we have to um, type up cards for the, their signature cards, we, they have 10 days to come into our office to receive the oath of office, and so 66 didn't show after we did all that work. So my proposal is, um, I looked at other towns that were near us, greater and a little less, a uh, number of electors, such as East Hartford, as we have 5,405 um, 
uh, jurors, the third of our jurors. Their third is 6203, and they have 45, and that means they have 15 for ours, 15 for D's, 15 for town clerk. Um, and the town of Manchester has over 7,000 electors, um, their third of electors, sorry, and they have 15. Um, which is five, five, and five. And um, the city of Stratford has, um, their third is 11,800 and some change, and they have 45. Um, currently, we have um, 42 Republicans that are listed as justice of, justices of the peace. Uh, out of those, 16, since they started their term in January of 21, 16 have performed weddings, and out of those 16, 10 have only performed one. And for the Democrats, we have 43. 11 of them have performed weddings, which is what most people use their justice of the, the peace um, confirmation for. Seven of them were single weddings. So I interpret that to mean that some people want to become JPs because they want to marry their niece in, in the spring or whatever, which is certainly um, legitimate. But there are other avenues that they can follow. Connecticut passed a law that allows people to become ordained online through an online ordination. I think it, last I knew it was like $50. You take the test, they send you your credentials, and now you can marry people. And that is what a lot of brides and grooms are choosing now because they want their best friend to marry them. Um, so I'm proposing um, 25 each, so that would be 25 Republicans, 25 Democrats, 25 town clerk positions. Thank you. Questions? So, yeah. So, so just to start with Councilor Santanella. Yeah, so just to be clear, tonight we are just setting the public hearing, not determining right. the number. The so that hearing. is the only question, right? Yes. And just for you, Sheila, while we're talking about it, um, in Connecticut, are we, or maybe this is for the town attorney, um, in Connecticut, is there a one-day designation where anybody can be, or you have to be ordained? I know Massachusetts, you can select Massachusetts somebody. Massachusetts has a one-day. One-day designation. Connecticut right. does not, do not have the one-day. You have not. to go through an ordination process somehow. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, th thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Mangini. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila, for the rundown. Uh, wow, that that's a big number, 5,400. I have been a JP forever, and I am active. I do bilingual weddings as well. So how, and, and again, I know we're voting just in the public hearing, how would one be voted in for JP with the number being reduced? How, how would you do that, implement that? Um, first of all, it wouldn't affect anyone serving currently. It would be effective on the next term, which is begins on January 6th of 2025. So as of now, it goes by party rules for the party, major party members. Um, they let, you know, it depends on what your party rules say. Some get voted in by the, the town committee. Others have, town committees have nominating committees that vote. It depends on what your party rules say. Um, so you would just have your 25 slots. If you don't fill them all in January and you only have 22 people that say they are interested, you have three vacancies to fill throughout the year. If you're unaffiliated or you're a member of a minor party, there is an application period that runs from August to November in which you have to apply. And then um, if I don't receive 25 applications, um, and I only receive 10, I only have 10 slots for the next, for the whole term. I can't fill vacancies. The only way I can fill a vacancy is if I had 25 slots and I received 30 applications, those five would go into a file in case people moved out of town or resigned. Thank you. Councilor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to briefly say thank you for this suggestion. I think this is something that really helps um, make the town more efficient and uh, towards the goal of professionalization. I like to see these things, so thank you so much. Okay. Remember, tonight's vote is to set the public hearing. Roll call, please. Um, Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Four. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Nelson? Four. Councilor Pisner? Four. Councilor Santanella? Four. 
Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Casati. Four. It's 11 members, four and none against. Item G, for informational purposes, to receive the resolutions and the attempt to consolidate from the Hazardville and Shaker Pines Fire Districts and to notify the town clerk to place on file. Um, do I have a motion um, to waive the reading of the motion resolution? To waive the reading. Uh, Councilor Nelson and a second, second by Councilor Ungeyer. Um, all, all in favor of waiving of the reading, unanimous. All right, now do I have a motion to approve the the receiving of the resolutions? So moved. Second. Councilor uh, Nelson is second by Councilor Santanella. I don't think there's any discussion on this. I think we're all happy with this. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Four. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Nelson? Four. Councilor Pisner? Four. Councilor Santanella? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. And Mayor Casati? Four. Eleven members for, none against. Uh, item 13, any other business proper to come before the council? Public communications, is there anybody that wants to come forward? Public communications, I declare over. Uh, Councilor communications. Right Fantastic. here. Fantastic. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh. Jeez, oh. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas. I'm the oh. only one who didn't say Merry Christmas oh. before. I was waiting Sorry. till the end. You know how much I love Christmas. <laughs> I wore my red. So uh, Merry Christmas. And um, to, to all of you, um, thank you very much for a good year. Uh, it's been a pleasure serving with all of you. And I look forward to 2023. Motion I, to adjourn. Yeah, hold, hold on. Just, just, <laughs> one, 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 just, just one, one, one final thing, you know. Um, you know. To everybody that, that's sitting up here, yes, we've had our differences. Uh, let's move forward with the year 2023, and let's work together as, as a council moving forward for the best interest of uh, Enfield. I want to thank everybody for your, your time and your efforts, and along with our staff. Mm -hmm. I wish everybody uh, a happy holidays and, and a happy new year. Now, motion to a adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much.